Continuing Blues Clues Month, if you remember the third part of my intro, I'm going to be talking about Blues Room. Now this segment slash spinoff has become very divisive for so many people. You have those who love it, like me. You have those who hate it. And you have those who find it okay, mediocre, and just don't know what to think of it. Now just like Blues Clues, this segment, well, you know the rest, has hold up for me very, very well. Why? Well, let's take a look back at this series, and this will be a short, brief history about it. Introduced in the Season 6 episode premiere, Legend of the Blue Puppy, is here where Blue, Joe, and all their friends meet a new one named Muna, who came here during the light of the Blue Moon, where Muna tells Blue she has a very special surprise hidden inside the house. And with a little help from a new friend, a key named, well... The key found in Blue's little pal polka dots, they search for Blue Surprise all around the house. Where they come across a little chest that has Blue's big surprise hidden inside there. And thus, the segment of Blue's room was born. Instead of going for the traditional route that Blue's Clues is known for, this style goes for more of a Jim Henson slash Muppets influence here. And if you're a diehard fan of the Muppets and you know any knowledge of the Muppets, you might recognize these people. Blue is puppeteered by Leslie Kara Rudolph, who you may recognize as the voice of Abby Kandabby from Sesame Street. And the voice for Blue was done by, forgive me if I say this wrong, Victoria Ponticorvo. And here's what her actual name looks like if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Peter Lentz provides the voice of Blue's little pal Polka Dots, who you may also recognize as the voice of Tutter from Bear in the Big Blue House, and Walter from the Muppets 2011 movie and Muppets Most Wanted. Joey Mazzarino, who you also recognize as the voice of Murray Monster from Sesame Street, who provided the voice for Rory. And last but not least, Cheryl Blaylock as Fred, and if you grew up in the late 1980s when Nick Jr. got started, you might recognize her as the voice of Eureka from Eureka's Castle. And if I keep talking about all these characters and who puppeteered and voiced them, we would be here all day long. And you know something else? This segment seems to be more divisive for people nowadays. Like I said in the third part of my Blues Clues Month intro, this segment seems to be more of a mixed bag for so many people. And you know something else? As a kid, I really loved this segment so much. And today, I still love it. I thought it was a great idea combining Blue's Clues with the Muppets. That's really cool. Now, I will be honest. I have never seen any single episode in this spinoff. And not because of it's terrible. Believe me, it's not terrible. I really like it that much. It's because when I was a little kid, I had my mindset on other things, and I never seen the entire series in general. Well, there are a few parts in it, in the in every episode that I do remember. Um, the uh, episode premiere of Snack Time Playdate, I remember that, and um, well, there's a short where Polka Dots roars really loud and shakes up the entire room. And Blue and Polka Dots becoming space cowboys? <sighs> and that's it. I've never seen every single episode from it. Now, I won't end off this video like this, but I will end this off with a positive note just for you. If I do manage to see every single episode from it, I'll give you my final thoughts on it or... Maybe make a review, and if I don't, then I'm just plain lazy. <laughs> well, I will try my best to find them. Well, tell me what you think of Blue's Room. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you find it okay or mediocre? Just tell me in the comments below, and I just want to say that I always have my, a very special place in my heart for this segment slash spinoff. From season six. Well, I'll see you all next time and be sure to watch out for my review of Blues Big Musical at the end of Blues Clues Month.
Stay tuned.